Hello and welcome to Academy Live episode 41. Today's topic is flashy images. What makes an image flashy? And of course, David is in the house. I am in the house. Yes. And so we will be right back after this short video about Academy. In this course, you will learn how to make subjects pop out, create pockets of light, create blue and golden hour light, and how to easily light flat lays. My name is Audrey Willard, and I'm here in the beautiful city of Barcelona to show you guys some tips and tricks on how to create natural looking light with flash. Don't get me wrong, I love natural light, but I like to maximize my possibilities as a photographer, and flash gives me the power to create natural looking light whenever the sun doesn't help me out. My goal with this course is to make you guys inspired. Build your self-confidence with making natural light with flash. I know some of you think that flash always looks artificial, harsh, or that it's just too complicated to control. This is so wrong. The first thing you need to know is how light works. Hello, friends and family out there. Um, family? Yes. Ooh. I'm sure there's someone uh, I'm related to <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you know them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> My father was a sailor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and welcome back, David. Thank you. Good to have you back. Oh, it feels great to be back. Yes. yes. It feels like home. Yes. My we, table. We are <laughs> exactly. Oh, we got all. We got another David here. Of course, our good friend from Scotland is here. Yes. Hello, uh, David from Scotland. Kevin. We got Ohio friends. Bolzano, and of course Rene and Emre. It's in the house as well. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, flashy images. So we're basically going to teach you how to take flashy, or how how you can take flashy images. Yes, we're doing it the opposite way around. Yes. How to make flashy images? I mean, if you know that, then just don't do it. Yeah. And if you don't like that, you can just do the opposite. Yeah. And then uh, you don't get flashy images. But before we get there, uh, I just want to encourage people that. Uh, maybe missed out on, on uh, last week's episode with Hannah Cousins. Uh, it's really worthwhile looking at it because Hannah, she has a very pragmatic and simple approach to lighting uh, using one light source. And uh, I actually did the bad thing. No, it's not, it's not a bad thing. Actually, it's a good thing. I stole her uh, way of lighting like right after she's left, she, she had left, and uh, and I took some images of my daughter that I posted on my Instagram, and it and, uh, it turned out really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I saw a beautiful image of your beautiful daughter. And yeah, and it's it all thanks Hannah to Hannah. Cousin's light. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, it was all Hannah uh, Cousin. You stole and it, but you still you did like that. That is, I mean, that's quite an effort. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I I did put the light there and so forth, oh, but I mean the, the the idea. Okay, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, but it's, it's uh, I steal with pride, and I think yes. other people should as well. Steal with pride. <laughs> All the things we do here, just steal as much as you want. Yes. Uh, good ideas or bad ideas. And, um, but it was really fun, and, and I, I'm, I've been photographically kind of uh, in a stage where I, I, I tend to overcomplicate things mm. every now and then. Mm. I, I do too much. I do know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so you, you add more things and they just, just get complex and, and messy. So it felt kind of actually pretty good just to go back to, I don't want to say basics, but to a more sim simple model and, and just work with one light. And, and you started to get the feel for, you know, start yeah. painting with, with, with one light only. And, and it was a lot of fun, mm. it was a fun session. I actually did a group shot yesterday 
uh, with only one light. And that was only because, I mean, I had my studio, two tons of light. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I can do one light things. I, th th that's not something strange, not even for me, because, I mean, you know, I love gear. And, yeah. You know. uh, but the only reason we used just one light was because uh, they, the, um, the persons we were, uh, I were photographing were uh, kind of afraid of technical stuff. Oh. So it was very important that it, that it felt really simple. No, no, no. Technically this is, challenged yeah. or technically intolerant. Exactly. Yes. Technically <laughs> intolerant people. people. Yeah. So uh, you have to, of course, know how to work with one light. I mean, if you can't use one light, yeah. then you shouldn't do two or three or so. Yeah, as you see, the in it's really YouTube. powerful. Yeah, it's it's good fun. So I can really recommend it. Um, <laughs> <You can't laughs> recommend it. No, but it's, it's 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 fun. It's a lot of fun. We got South Africa here, uh, and uh, you are came from Sweden as well. Katan, Patagonia. Jim. Oh, Patagonia, cool. Mm. And we got Stuttgart. I wonder uh, which part of Stuttgart. I lived outside of Stuttgart mm. for five years in uh, Sindelfingen, which is south. Uh, close to the Mercedes factory. Mm -hmm. And Joel, of course. You, you have lived in so many places. I know. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I, I live. They, they, they kind of throw me out of the country and then... <laughs> stay <laughs> exactly, there. Stay there. <laughs> and Spain as well. So, uh, so that was Hannah. Great fun. Look at it. Get inspired. I was and, uh, and uh, I stole. And if you want to see what I, I did... Will, I will check it out because I haven't seen it. Yeah, it, I was, it was cooking good food fun. for a big company, so I couldn't yeah. see it, but I will look at it. <laughs> and she's fun. She's, yeah, uh, she's really great. A lot of good energy. But we, we, we promised to have her back and uh, we will have her back. And she committed that she will come back and yeah. have fun and uh, play with lights uh, with us here. Cool. So, flashy images. Because there's a lot of this... Uh, I mean, we, we, we just saw this video with... Uh, uh, with Audrey Wollard, she's uh, teaching on how to make natural looking images. A lot of people are talking about I'm a natural light shooter and, and, and so forth. And uh, so I was kind of digging around uh, and trying to understand a little bit, okay, what is, why is it that people, one, don't like flash and why it's so different and, and also what different pitfalls people fall in. And that's when we, we mm. sat down and we did the list. And so we made a list with like, 17 yeah. or so more pitfalls, pitfalls typical yeah. things that people and uh, and to. yeah and, and 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 there's different rules i mean sometimes if you're in a studio for example uh, yeah if you're in a studio if your images clearly show that we are in a studio we are not going to pretend anything we are going to use artificial light i mean then it doesn't feel flashy because yeah. the image hasn't promised anything else i mean so that flashy, when, when an image is too flashy, that is in certain types of pictures, I yeah. would say. Certain types of situations. And people are commenting here that people are scared of, of, of flash. Uh, and, and, and I think uh, it comes from uh, knowledge and, and not knowing how to work with it. But, but like we mentioned in a studio, for example, if there are no rules, I mean, you, very often you start with taking a one black frame basically ma taking you, exposing your camera so that With all no this flash, ambient light, no, so flash. no flash, no nothing. So make sure that the, none of your ambient light in the studio actually gets into the sensor and impacts the image. Yeah, which creates a black image. That's where you yeah. start. It's your starting point when you are in a So like, like, like a painter, you s painters start with a white, yeah. Uh, canvas, you start with a black canvas yeah, exactly. and then you start painting with light. And then every little light you put in there, uh, is something that you can control. Exactly. And if it's too much, if it's too small, if it's too from much from one angle or another, you change it. It's yeah. like painting an image. Yeah. Exactly. So that, but that is when you are in, in a, a studio. studio and it's and very. And, and if we, since I mean, painting. I mean, that's uh, painting with light. That's photography. Uh, if we're making the same comparison with 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 uh, painters, um, you have certain painters that paint in studio where no rules. Uh, actually apply, uh, for example, Picasso or Salvador Dali. I mean, if, I, if you look at the Picasso or Salvador Dali image or painting, it, it, they are strange, right? <laughs> they, yeah. don't, they don't look like nature or naturally looking. No, and they don't intend to. And exactly. They, uh, and I mean, uh, like if I were, do you know, um, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Pollock? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know that doesn't even you know it's not even supposed to look like something. Yeah, no. I mean, but that's not the intention. Yeah. And if you as a photographer have an intention of the light to look natural and it doesn't, that is when it feels flashy. Yeah. When the intention is something but it doesn't turn out all the way, that is what we are going to look at. Today. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, so we mentioned studio, no rules, black frame, and then you start painting, adding lights into your and, and creating what you want. If you want square noses or buttocks that are two meters long, <laughs> yes. watches floating over. <laughs> floating watches. And yeah. then fine, then, then you can do that and that's all okay. Of course. But if you are outside or if you are in an environment and stuff is happening in the background, that's when it starts to be important to, mm. uh, and also that's where it starts to be dif difficult with yeah. flash. That is when, yeah, exactly. Well, difficult in terms of that you do not know what to look for. You don't, I mean, it, it, it isn't like a rocket science. It's just... It's, the, it's quant physics. Yes, it's, exactly. It's, kind it's, of, quant it, it's even more complex. <laughs> quantum, quantum physics. It's, it's, it's more, more complex than, <laughs> than rocket science, <laughs> if you really go into it. So. Yeah, it can be. It yeah. can be. Yeah, but, but what I mean is that I think that many people think that they are scared of flash because they think that it's so technical. It's mm. so many things. You have to know the menus, you have to know all the buttons and such. But what you have to learn is to know what to look for and to feel. I mean, you, 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 you do lighting with your stomach a lot, with, a, with, a, yeah. with the gut feeling. Yeah. But before you get there, I mean, you, you need your hours to practice. But the, the one easy thing is try to mimic what nature does. Yeah. Well, I mean, just yeah. go back and think, okay, so how many suns do we have? How many suns do we have? Yeah, okay, there's one. Okay, so start with one light source. Yeah. I mean, that's that like is one simple way. Exactly, and, and where is the sun? Exactly. Is it shining from a car or, you know, where, where? then, you know, yeah. try to place your lights as with the sun, yeah. right? So that, that really makes it uh, a lot easier. And then, oh, do we have any modifiers for cubism? Well, actually, uh, this one, <laughs> yeah. the, the, the Pro Box, <laughs> the Pro Box, yeah. It's a really good cubism. <laughs> and then. <laughs> well, at least, I mean, in the frame. Yeah, exactly. Modifiers in the frame. We got Australia, Andes in Stockholm, USA, San Francisco, India. I like your video on physics of photography, the three cornerstones. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's really that's kind of the the starting point, and when we really kick it up another notch is in the in the next movie, which is the uh, the the video which is called Fundamentals of Lighting, where the three courses. That's where we really dig into. Yeah. Uh, Malaysia, New well, York City, yeah, okay, so people are from basically all over, cool. Uh, I'm just looking to, to see if there are any, any specific questions. If you have any specific questions, just uh, fire off. Uh, yes. We will also, we have Ken, of course, is here. We do not have, last week we had uh, my daughter here uh, as a model, so. But today, I can't, yeah, today we do. I, we can't, I can't afford to use her as a model. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too expensive. Yeah, yeah I understand. <laughs> New yeah. jackets, new uh, shoes. Yeah, uh, eighteen-year-old daughter. Yeah. Uh, they cost a lot. They do. Yeah, and she's up for, you know, um, if anyone wants her, yet, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's, Ken, she's really Ken uh, is, you know, one charge and and he's yours forever. Yeah, exactly. And Knut Orge from Stjerdal in Norway is here as well. Awesome. Yes. Um, so we are now talking about uh, this list that we did of all these. Uh, common pitfalls that people do uh, and today we're going to share at least uh, three of them yeah. maybe four yeah, uh, we'll see where we end up but yeah and, and so we have a whole bunch of these uh, and, and the idea is that we want to share them with you guys and uh, uh, and then you can just do the opposite <laughs> yes uh, exactly uh, yeah and, and uh, if you have any uh, own thoughts about flashy images why does an image look like it's flash or not in, I mean, put it in the comments so other people can, can be inspired by that too, and maybe we can bring it up and talk about it. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure how, if you can put images no, in the comments can't. on on. So you have to be really. <laughs> no, I mean you can PM. You can just use the PM me, 
yeah. uh, Anders Hanola, you'll find me you know, on uh, Facebook and, and just fire off an image and we can bring it up and we can talk about the images, why, why that specific image looks uh, flashy. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. And uh, you walk image, I started with way too many lights. Now he's back to one, maybe two sometimes. Exactly. I mean, I, I, I totally hear you. I think it's uh, kind of coming back to basics mm. helps. And you, you could use one as a mean light and then maybe add a second light for effect if you want to have something to happen in the background or you need to separate the person from the background. Exactly. Like and when I do big light setups, you know, with like seven lights or whatever, uh, it's always one light at a time. One light does one thing. Mm. So it's always one light for the face, one light for that thing, one light for that thing. Yeah. So that is, uh, I mean, even you have to be able to control one light. Yeah. And then you just put them together, but still control each and one of them. So one light is key. We actually got two questions here directed uh, to us. One question from Rebecca. Someone called Rebecca, yes. She asked in Swedish, how did the... The cakes taste. The cakes taste. Yeah, we did have some cake before. Yes. And they, they were, were delicious. They were so delicious. Yeah, we yes. had to... We, we, we always uh, we indulge in some uh, inspirational cake. Uh, exactly. Before this... So that we are full of sugar and <laughs> pumped up and then a lot of creative ideas. Yes. And uh, no, no, another question from David Henderson. Any time scale for David's book? Well, uh, the time scale is changing all the time. <laughs> like, it depends on when you ask. Um, actually, at the moment right now, uh, I'm working on a new part of it because we have done some new interesting discoveries about mm -hmm. diverging shadows and such. Um, and so n I do not ha have any time scale right now because now we want to clear this part and then perhaps I can start looking again for, you know... A publisher? A and publisher, and because then my last publisher went out the door. Uh, so, but hang in there. Do <laughs> hang in there, because it's packed <laughs> with how light works. And yeah. now with new stuff that didn't exist for like a year ago. Yeah, exactly. And we got a question if there's any modifiers that B, uh, B1 should not use. Well, it's... Uh, I think we, we actually talked about it on the Hannah episode as well. We have it right here behind us. The, the Profoto Hardbox. Uh, that's probably one of the few that you should not use because it's, it's mainly made for uh, the, the Profoto Pro heads. Yeah, and, and the extruding. Yeah, with the extruding flash chip. But besides that, it's pretty much you could use everything. Uh, you might have some slight differences on some of the older modifiers. Um, uh, in, in how they behave yeah. versus a pro head with a B1. But in, in general, they, the differences are so small that you have to be a David or an Anders to actually notify, notice yeah, those. Yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> like uh, if you have a softbox, you know, a, yeah. a really common question, does the B1 really fill up the whole softbox? I mean, uh, yes, it does. Yeah. Uh, if you have the biggest, biggest one, it, you might have a, a bit darker parts up and down, but will it create uh, a light that isn't as good as I mean it's it's the differences are so small and yeah. the differences the differences aren't in quality it is something else it's you know maybe you even like it more I mean so you can have a B1 in everything yeah. except the that, hard box yeah. how is it with the uh, the cubism one it sure. works it yeah. works yeah because in there there's a lot of mirrors and stuff that just makes spreads light evenly so it's really hundred percent even or from edge to edge. Mm. So, but you know what? I think we should uh, start uh, walking up to Ken. Oh. I'll send you out of here. Oh, send and, you yeah, out. Yeah, and uh, and start talking about um, the three pitfalls that we want to talk about today. Yes. And I, uh, and then you could maybe show uh, how to uh, uh, create an, uh, an, a flashy image. Let's do a flashy, <laughs> a typical flashy image. Yeah. I will do that. Am I online? Am I on in yes, camera? Yes, you I, are on camera. I remove this one. Yeah. Is this one out of camera now? Yes. So if you first, the first pitfall that we talked about is uh, when you are not having a balance between the background and 
the talent that you're shooting. So, exactly. for example, because the background is so important between your talents, your subjects, and, and and the background. I mean, yeah. the light between them that is super important. Yeah. So don't forget to turn on the flash. I will turn on the flash because I think I turned them off. Yeah, just they to were on vacation, so here they are. Okay, so here we have just one flash, uh, and I will. Put the model light on just to see where we are at. Each like that. Okay, so the flash are there. Cool. And, and so now I'd like to have an image which is uh, where the background is too dark and the can is perfectly lit with a nice open loop. Um, Op okay, open loop. Then we do like that. Perfect. Okay, here we go. So just a typical image that probably will look, that should look kind of flashy. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, yeah, we got a cool. dark image uh, or dark background, a darker. It should uh, be really background. dark background. Yeah. And uh, you see a nice contrast on the uh, uh, on Mr. Ken, and the, co the shadows are uh, in good contrast, but, but here you can clearly tell that he's, uh, it, it's, it's flashy. Exactly, you, because I mean, I mean it, it, it isn't like a bad image or anything like that, mm. it's all about the flashiness. You can clearly see that this is lit artificially because it doesn't uh, connect to the background. The background doesn't have this light, which means that we have only have light on him, in other words, it's artificial, yeah. so probably a flash. Uh, and and so so the the cure for that would probably be to balance the yeah. background with him. And so if if you what 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 would you do to I, balance? I, I want to I want to use the the uh, the ambient light in here that we have. So the light that I see in the background, yeah. if if I make that light brighter by making my shadow speed uh, much much slower, that will bring in the light from the background. In other words, create getting the background to be much brighter. So you don't, you don't have to change the power of the flash, you don't have to do anything with aperture because you decided that you're going to have a, a specific aperture. To have a specific depth of field. Exactly. exactly, and so you only do it working now with your uh, shutter speed. And if your shutter speed is too slow, that's when you use the ISO to compensate and you can bump up, it, uh, bump up the, uh, uh, the shutter speed to a more normal Exactly, so right. I, I just uh, lowered my shadow speed a lot and just bring out the light and I can actually see in my light meter what's happening here in camera so I can get an estimate of what should be good and there we go. So now we see, yeah, we see the, the same uh, open loop uh, shadow. We see uh, a good, nice balance. Uh, you can see that he's lit and uh, but, but there's a balance between him and the background. Yeah, so the light, I mean, the, it, it's much more like, uh, oh, this is an image, this is a person, and it is, he is in a room, and so on. I mean, of course, you still have a light that is really uh, sculpting his face, yeah. but it's, it's, uh, it doesn't scream flash in the same way as, exactly. as the first one. Yeah. And this is all about just balancing to the background. Turn off the flash and just, just take one image without just so people seeing the difference. Did the flash actually do something? Yeah. Uh, so we got a question here from uh, Yes, Peter. What 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 stand we are using to hold uh, the flash? It's actually a Manfrotto Nanopole stand, and I I, I like them a lot. They're very uh, uh, lightweight, small, and so. I, I okay. Took, oh, sorry. I, yeah, I, it's there. Uh, so here we can see that uh, you have the same background. It looks nice, but then. Uh, can is a little bit darker, and if you are taking a portrait of a person, uh, I mean you can see it, you can see that it's can, but um, you don't get any shadows, so you're not you're not shaping his face. And, and yeah, and this light, I mean, it doesn't feel flashy. Yeah, no, because it isn't flashy at all. Yeah. And I would say that this light is um, well, it doesn't feel flashy. But if you would want to do a portrait of him, you want his eyes to have some light in them. Exactly. Yeah. So with the flash image, could you, if you go back to the flash, when yeah. I use the flash with uh, the same, it's right there. you see the background is the same. Yeah. So that is a natural 
uh, natural within exquisite you know the word for the yes yeah. natural looking yeah the, the oh yeah the uh, yeah I don't know what I don't know the word in Swedish either okay uh, so yeah exactly so the image where you can see with no flash yeah I mean it really feels like that is no flash yeah. exactly and that is mainly because there is no flash and the background is correct to the amount of light is correct on the background and the face and then we got a question here uh, if we ever use a polarizing filter with flash uh, polarizing filter with flash if we ever use it What's yeah, that the I, question? I use ND filters yeah well, well I use polarizers but I just want to know uh, what was the question exactly was it if we use or yeah. when we do, use? do you ever use a polarizing filter with flash I use polarizing filter with flash yes in two situations I mean you I mean I mean even there you can use it on camera I, yes but you mm. can use it on flash yeah exactly if you use it on flash then you need another polarizing filter on the lens yeah, so yeah you exactly. have double polarizers yeah because then you can remove all the well it's not so common but it's used in uh, when you shoot like uh, uh, product photography for example yeah. if you do not want any reflections let's say in in, in eyewear glasses eyeglasses or ah, yeah, yeah, and yeah. such yeah. then you can remove all reflections by using polarizers on the flash and on the lens yeah yeah uh, okay good 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 I think uh, uh, Hamed is asking, for example, when shooting outdoors, uh, you can tell from what angle the sun is shining and your flash flashes from another angle. It shows obviously because it can be too strong uh, and you don't, you have not exposed for the background. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the direction is really important yeah. that you have. If you have a direction in the background, you can see where the sun is coming from, then your flash must come from the same direction or else it will be obvious. Yeah. You will have the effect of having two suns, you know, yeah. two directions, and nature never Ooh. does that. You know what? Why don't you do that? Ooh. <laughs> that, that would be cool. <laughs> so, so oh, well, uh, while you are setting that up, uh, we can look at you while you're doing it. But uh, you can show one of the flashes, uh, the, the heads to oh, the yes. camera. Because we actually... Uh, we have gelled these flashes. Is this visible? Uh, not really. Am I too close or too no, far away? No, it is too dark. Too dark. Yeah, we don't have enough light here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go. Or maybe you just take it off. Even. Yeah. Boop. Yes. So we have this uh, orange CTO, this orange filter. Oh, nice. On the flash. So we have the same color of our light from the flash as we have in, in, the, in, in the room from the, the lights in the ceiling. And, 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 and then, but, but when I'm looking at this and also when I'm looking at the camera here through the stream, it looks all white and bright and nice. What, what, that's the, and now you have this orange light coming out of the yes. flash. Yes, okay, okay, yeah. and I, I understand what you mean. So I have the orange light on my flash, and you wonder why isn't the light orange on the image? Mm. Because I have tweaked my white balance in camera to make all the orange to be more blue, mm, in other yeah. words, be more neutral. And because even though this light looks kind of nice right now, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not that nice. Well, you need to take nice, one step it's, back. It's, it's a relative thing. It's uh, you know our brains, yeah. and eyes, white balance, everything. So, uh, so the important part here is that we have the same color of the flashes, thanks to the the orange filter, the same color of the flashes as we have in the fluorescent light. Yeah, exactly. And then they match, and then they they don't look flashy. Exactly. And then but now I want to do a double shadow. So that was actually uh, one bonus trick. Yeah, let's do a double yeah. a double shadow because I think that's interesting to show because I can see it a lot. A lot of people do double shadows. They do a setup like this. Two flashes run from each side, boom from one side, bam from another side, and that will create <coughs> a strange, uh, uh, stra strange result. Uh, but I think people do this because they want to remove the shadows. That is why suspicious. I, I am suspicious, uh, my, my suspicion, how do you say that? My guess yeah. is that they want to remove shadows by using And you want to light lights. up the whole face and, yeah. and, and then you do the classical 45 degrees, 45 degrees and blah, blah, blah. Bam, yeah. bam. And this is how I think they're, they, they are thinking. Like this flash 
it's a lot of light. It, it, it will remove all the shadows on this side. And this light will have a lot of light and remove all the shadows on this side. So this should create a shadowless light. It doesn't. So let's take this image and uh, see what we get. I just need to turn the flashes on again. There we go. A typical <laughs> two light image. Three, two, one, and boom. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Here we so go. Let's see. What did we get? Oh, we have Ken, but he's really nice, well balanced with the uh, with the background. But there's Ooh. something happening here. Look at the nose shadows. Oh, it looks like a butterfly. Is this a butterfly <laughs> shadow? <laughs> It really looks like a butterfly. Yeah, uh, well, you can see two clearly, you, you can clearly see two pronounced nose shadows, two yeah. shadows at a time. You can see two reflections on the nose, you can see two reflections on the everywhere. In the eye, yeah. In the eye, yeah. Uh, and this directly feels, at least to me, super duper mega flashy. Yeah. Because the nature has only one sun, the face has very, very seldom two nose shadows when uh, when being outside and also it maybe makes your nose look wider now ken has this perfect nice nose uh, but if you have even a little bit wider nose then you get really uh, you kind of enhancing the, the wide nose yeah and i mean uh, if, if if i go back to the, what i think is the main reason for, uh, why people do this they want to remove shadows they want to have an even light over the face but they end up with double nose shadows. Yeah. I think that um, if they just knew that a shadow, you, you, you can't remove a shadow by using another small light source. Because a shadow, a casted shadow like this is created, the, the, the shape of it is created due to the size of the light source. I mean, we have discussed this for so, so, so long now, so everybody in the whole world should know this. But still, the bigger light source you have, the wider the edge of the shadow will be. In other words, it will feel softer. Yeah. And here, since we're using too small, we can see the shadow edge is pretty darn sharp. Yeah, because it's a small light source. Yeah. So if you want one of the directions not to be visible, if you want one shadow to be invisible, so to speak, then you need to have one of them to be a big light source. Yeah, either, yeah, exactly, a big light source or, uh, uh, or, or on camera. You can have... Exactly, uh, you, you're, exactly, that, that's a good point, because, uh, let me rephrase, uh, if you do not want to see the second shadow, yeah. you want to hide it. Yes. You can do it two, in, in two ways. Either you make the shadow edge be re go really, really wide, because then the shadow will be soft and not visible. Yeah. And the other way, oh sorry, I have to look there. <laughs> yeah. And the other way is of course to place those shadows, the shadow from the second light where it doesn't show. Like, if I put, let's say, this light uh, straight in front of Ken, like that, then all the shadows from this small light source will happen behind him and the nose shadow will also be like invisible because you won't have any casted shadows in any direction from this light. Then you, all you do is you're, you're light, lightening the shadows, you're, you're making them less contrasty and it's kind of a, what, what we call a fill light. Yeah, this would be more like just a fill light. Straight on from the camera's axis towards the face. Exactly. And I mean, it's easier to have the flash on camera than on a stand yeah. like this. Uh, so that is one really simple way to just have, I mean, now we're talking about two lights here. If we want to just fill the shadows, if you have this one in a more pleasant angle like this, and you just want to fill the shadows, the easiest way, the same angle as, the f uh, as from camera, that won't create any new uh, thrown shadows. Okay, then you just fill the shadows. Yeah. Uh, and a more, another way is to, to, to create the shadow edges to be more wide. And in that, for to do that, you need a bigger light source. You can just, if you do, I mean, if you do just like this and just use the wall that we have in here, 
if this flash is lighting up this wall, the wall is super big and will create shadow edges that are super soft. Yeah. So this will also fill the shadows. And then you get a less contrasty Yeah, uh, because you will image, feel, yeah. yeah, you will have less contrast, but you will also affect, you know, the rest of the room. That's true. So yeah. it's a bit of a balance. It's a bit of a balance. So that was number two, double shadows, yes. which we uh, react to because there's normally only one small light source in the sky and it's the sun. Yeah, exactly. I just must mention because uh, otherwise they But isn't there a place in. like Tatooine or in, in Star uh, Wars they have <laughs> two suns? Tatooine, exactly. Tatooine, yeah. the, 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 the planet Tatooine in Star yeah. Wars, they have two suns. So they have double, they should have double shadows. They have, uh, yeah. But now we are on Earth, mm. only one shadow, only one visible shadow. Um, but there is one more way actually to create this fill light without shadows. That is of course use a modifier, a big modifier, like an umbrella, a softbox or whatever. And the bigger, the lesser the, sh the shadow edges will be visible. Yeah. Um, and I just want to pop in that if you want to fill a shadow, it's still better to, to fill the shadows, I mean about the direction. Instead of filling the shadows, even though you have a softbox, don't do it from below just because you have shadows from below. Do it from up here because you still want the shadow under the nose to be the darkest shadow in your face. So it's better to have your fill light still from above. Which brings us to number three, which happens a lot. Yes. Uh, we see that a lot. People take a flash and then uh, they... Yeah, put that away and then they, they place it somewhere and they place it a little bit too low. Yes, they place it somewhere. Oh, I want to light your face with yeah. my new beautiful flash. I put it here. Are you ready? Are you ready? And then they take the camera like this. I have to turn off this flash. And then they take the image. Three, two, one and boom. And then we get this. Yes. Uh, so here clearly we see, so this can happen either by one, you are placing the flash from underneath and uh, the sun doesn't shine from the ground, really. That is one, one uh, ground break. Yeah, uh, uh, and that's why it break. looks awkward. But also another very common thing here is that people use like silver reflectors. Yeah, they all, I see reflectors. so many people do silver reflectors, especially silver reflector from below. Uh, if you cut over to this camera, yep. they use the silver reflector from below like that. They have the sun maybe behind or so, bouncing it and filling the shadows from below, which will create visible <laughs> shadow edges from below because the, the reflection is a small light source, in other words, small uh, shadow edges. Uh, so when the light is coming from below, you're lighting up everything that you do normally have shadows in, like the eye sockets, under the nose, under the lip, and so on. When you lift you those shadows, it will look strange. It will look unnatural. It will look very, very seldom pleasing. Yeah. So I'm just showing now in, in Capture One the areas uh, like here, this part, or oh, maybe I use this guy here. So this area here, you normally don't, this doesn't get lit. The columella, the, under, the, the kind of underneath the, uh, yeah. the nose. And, the, and, this and Mr. Ken here, he had doesn't have any bags under his eyes, which we other people have. Yeah, but and then you get shadows from those yeah, bags. Oh, yeah, that's really, true. And, and, and when you have double chins, they are really pronounced. So light from below. No good. Uh, basically, here again, do what, mm -hmm. the nat what nature does. Copy, mm -hmm. copy the sun. If the sun is shining from above, then try to get your, 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 uh, uh, your lights coming from above as well. Yes. That's very simple. I mean, just try to mimic what the sun does. Try to mimic what the sun does. And the day does. when the sun is shining from the ground underneath, then, well, yeah, then you can do that. It would look very natural, but I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen. Exactly. But there are occasions when you actually could use this type of lighting. For example, if you're shooting a... Uh, windsurfer, for example, you might have sun coming from. Uh, yeah, if, if from you're doing a windsurfer in the studio, for example, yeah. if you really want to mimic, because this can happen in nature. 
and you can if you if you know what you're doing i mean then you can use what nature also does but i mean this is a really rare example yeah. of what light what nature does uh, so li lighting from below is a i don't know why so many people come to me they are so happy because they want to tell me that i have also bought some flashes <laughs> and i want to show you i shot my beautiful husband yeah. in the in, in the basement and look at those images and the first images from the new flashes are almost always from below yeah either from waist level or or further yeah. below yeah. Uh, and i think it just comes naturally that you place them either on a table or or on the light stand a little bit too low yeah so yeah and it looks like shit <laughs> no i mean <laughs> well, it, yeah it it's looks all, it's all about the intention i think yeah i mean if you if you have like a uh, art exhibition with your art, and the exhibition's name is uh, lit from below, yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> then it <laughs> it yeah, will be it beautiful. Sense, yeah. So it's all about the, the uh, intention. intention. What, what do you want to do? Yes, do you want to mimic the nature? Do you want to create something of your own? Yeah, exactly. So we talked about balancing uh, ambient light with flash. Yeah, Just that's to, the first important. To, uh, recap what we've done here. Uh, we took this image where clearly we had not uh, balanced the background with uh, Mr. Ken. He looks great, but the background is a little bit too dark, so it's obvious that he's lit. And then I just let in more light with yeah. a slower shadow speed, just get more light in the background, the, uh, the available light. And the available light have another color in this, in this room, in this situation. Uh, so we have color. Uh, gels on our flashes, so the flashes have the same temperature as our uh, lights in the ceiling. Yeah, and uh, and we've got a question from Jim, which we're going to answer on the last image. Uh, I think it's a good question. Uh, and then we just took a reference picture of uh, no lights at all, which is it's it's a it's an okay image if you wanted to shoot. But as if for a portrait, and you want to have a little bit of life in your uh, eyes and and maybe define some shadows and and create something that's where the f uh, flash can help and, and highlight the, f the, the face. And then we went over to our famous double shadows. Yeah, two lights, two lights from, from different angles and we have two nose shadows and uh, this never happens in nature. And, and of course it can happen inside, indoors. I mean, we are indoors mm -hmm. in this image. So, but if you were outside, this yeah. would be like total catastrophe. And we see this all the time. Yeah. And then the last is when we, we are getting light from below. Yeah. But then Jim is asking, well, what about clamshell lighting? That's very common. Yeah. Right. And, uh, I mean, it's very popular to exactly. use uh, that. Yeah. And I would say that there is actually um, one, two schools, I would say. Uh, one school that is my school, that is when you do clamshell, try, try to be really subtle with the difference. I mean, uh, so the, the, the lower part of your nose still is the darker part. So you can still feel this three-dimensional feeling. Because if you get the lower part of the nose to be as uh, bright as or the... Brighter. Or brighter. Yeah, uh, as, as the nose bridge, then uh, it, for me, it looks like it's a crappy image, a crappy light, lit image. But if you keep it uh, darker, then it will be feel more three-dimensional. And you could have it just even slightly yep. darker. I mean, it's, it's really a hair, yeah. uh, a it's really, really small, a thin exactly. line, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a balance. Yeah, it's a balance. But then there is another school, which, I, I, uh, which is not my school, but still, I, I agree. That is what we were talking about in the beginning, because when you do a clamshell, I mean, it's really obvious that you are in a studio. It's really obvious that it is artificial yeah. light. So, yeah. I mean, no one will like, oh, nature doesn't do that. No, but it had n I had none intention to make a natural looking light. So exactly, yeah. And then you, can, then you can pop on eight different lights if yeah. you want to. And it can look like shit, but it's, I mean, no one will sell that. Say, no one will say, well, that doesn't look like nature, mother nature did it. Yeah, it doesn't look natural, exactly. uh, naturally lit because no, it's not. I'm in a room and I'm shooting uh, in, in studios, I wanted to create this image. Uh, 
So in studio, clamshell, yes, works absolutely, I would say. Uh, and then, then it's up to taste if some people like it, some people don't. I mean, there but is famous photographers out there who sells uh, really big light things yeah. from up, from sides, from below, that really puts a super even light on your face to yeah. remove all the shadows. And if you like that, go for it. Yeah. Um, but I would say, it, if when you, I mean, this is a personal taste for me, as long as you keep the lower angles of your of your parts of your face, the eye sockets, the nose, the chins, uh, a bit a tad darker, you get more three-dimensional feeling to it, and no one will think like, "Well, why is it darker under the nose?" Yeah, I mean yeah, that yeah, is the most normal thing. You get a little bit of depth in 3D. Exactly. Yeah. So that is the answer about clamshell lighting. Yeah, Jim is in our in our in your school. <laughs> yeah, cool. And, and so, so uh, and, and, and like with anything with photography or with lighting, uh, there are no rights and wrongs. You can paint like Picasso, you can paint like Dali or Monet. They're all beautiful images uh, on their own. But if you have the intention to do certain things, well, that's when certain rules start to play. Mm. For example, I want to do, I want to take natural looking pictures. And I'm outdoors, I'm in the park with flowers and, and sun is coming down and so forth. Well, then there are certain things you need to think about. What's happening in the background? Uh, yeah. Where does the sun come from? How many suns do I have on the sky, etc.? And that's where you need to start copying that. Yes, and, and I think that if you are really into natural lit images, I mean, mm. tr true natural lit images, uh, when you see a beautiful natural lit position of a person, let's say we are outside and the yeah. anus is so beautifully lit naturally, Look at that. Yeah. Look at the shadows. Where are the shadows? Because that is what you have to mimic when you are doing that will flash. Yeah. And then also, for example, let's say I'm shooting you in this natural light. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and we have this beautiful light coming from, from uh, my left, your right, yeah. from this side here. Yeah. And, and so we have sun coming in. I see clearly the sun, the shadows come falling on that side. Yeah. And, but I feel that you are kind of melting in with the background. I want to separate you with a little bit. Yeah. So I want to put a little bit of a rim light or, or add something to it, right? Yeah. Uh, and then if I do that, then use the same side as the sun and the other one. So, you, so I don't put it on this side, for example, because then they're contradicting each other. Yeah, and it so, will feel Yeah, it will it feel feels You're strange. using a flash, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you use a kicker or rim light or... Because you can use effects like that outdoors as well. Mm. Um, and, and then it's, it feels much more natural looking. Yeah. Uh, I have two more tips about that in that uh, area. If you're in a super... If you have a beautiful background, naturally lit background, but when you are standing in front of it, and I want to take a picture of you, and when the, uh, the light on you isn't as good, but mm. the background is beautiful, yeah. then block the sun just for, for you, put the flash there and control it so it is a beautiful light, and then mm. take the picture. Then you have the beautiful Smart. background and the beautiful face yeah. <laughs> and the beautiful light. And the beautiful light yes, on yes, a yes. face. On a face. <laughs> <Yeah. Exactly. laughs> Uh, or actually, I used to do this a lot uh, when it's kind of stressful, uh, like in weddings and so. Uh, flash an umbrella, and I block the sun, yeah. the natural sun with the umbrella, because yeah. then I know that all the directions are correct, yeah. and we have a soft, beautiful light on on the couple or whatever. Yeah. So blocking the sun with your it's, light it's source. Smart. And then yeah. you then you're replacing that with, and and you, then you can take control over the sunlight exactly. on your face. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, so, so, I mean, of course, like with many things, you can look for inspiration with the big masters. And, 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 and again, there is no right or wrong. Uh, there are, I mean, we see Salvador Dali doing these pictures with the uh, uh, Botox that are two meters long and so forth. And that's all okay. Yes. And some people, they, they do funky stuff and then that's okay. If you like the image, awesome. Um, so, so the only thing... Um, what we're trying to, to help you with is to s a few guidelines or some uh, I would recommendations say, exactly. on, on and I would you say to, that you can avoid. I would say uh, basic guidelines because yeah. you can break them. Oh yeah, yeah. You absolutely. can break them so much. Absolutely. We have a question here. We have a comment from David Henderson uh, that Rembrandt, uh, the image from Rembrandt, Conspiracy of Claudius, uh, Conspiracy of Claudius civils. Uh, is an excellent example of lighting from below. I mean, have you seen the image, uh, you know, the image where I, the, with the sand that I took? 
Oh, yeah, can yeah, we yeah, get exactly. it up easily? Because uh, that is also lit from below. Yeah, actually, because yeah, lighting from below is something that do happen in nature. And it's actually... So actually we can do this. Yes. So if you look at the, the guy there, you can clearly see on his stomach that the stomach is a bit brighter than the chest. And if we could zoom in, which we can't now. No, but you see there's a shadow here. Yeah. So that is also lit from below um, on purpose yeah. because that is supposed to look like perhaps it was a it, it is a door on the left and this, when the sun is shining as it as you can see it does on the wall behind when the sun is shining through an open door you will have a big light source on the ground that is lighting up from below inside so this yeah. can abs absolutely happen and and painters do this as you said, R Rembrandt does this and, uh, and others. So you can absolutely do this, yeah. lighting from below, but then on intention that you, you I mean, uh, it, it isn't random. I yeah. mean, when Rembrandt painted, it wasn't a random angle of the light. I mean, it's really to enhance the feeling that he, want, he was after. Um, so good comment there, David. Yeah. Cool, and I think... Uh uh, I think the crowd has been very, either we've been extremely clear with our questions or what, what we've been talking about, because uh, I'm not getting too many. We have this, uh, the polarizing thing from, from Jim. Do you ever use polarizing filter? Uh, on camera. On yeah. camera with flash. Uh, I understand the point, you want to control the amount of f reflections. Uh, well, technically, yeah, you can, control some amount of it but since you since the, the direction of the light uh, I mean if you put your flash so you get as least reflections as possible with the polarizer then it probably won't look good anyway so I don't do that I don't use a polarizer with flash but you can absolutely do that and remove some of the reflections that is the polarized light yes you can yeah but the polarizer on the flash and on the lens at the same time that's pretty yeah, yeah. And uh, just a small tip, have you ever considered that the A1, the size of the diameter of the A1 and the diameter of a polarizing filter? Ooh. Ooh. So it's really easy to get polarized light out, out of A1. Nice. Secret tip, only for you guys. <laughs> now I want to play with that. Yeah. That's when I'm going to go out and play. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is going to buy an extra polarizing <laughs> filter. That is really cool because you remove all the reflections. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there are no further questions, Your Honor. And that means, um, uh, where's Hannah? Well, Hannah is home in the uh, UK. So you have uh, to stick with, with us. Me. Yes. I mean, with uh, us today. I also have long hair, though. It's yeah, that's yeah. true. But you have it in a man bun. I have it in a man bun, exactly. <laughs> and I have some boobs here, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, Thank you so much for, you, uh, for hanging with us today and I hope you learned something about how to make flashy images. You can avoid balancing with the ambient light. You can use two flashes to get double, image, double shadows yes. or you can light from below. Yeah. Three excellent tips on how to make flashy images. Exactly. Or you do the opposite if you make, want to make them more natural looking. Yeah. That's yeah. a really pedagogical way of... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're teaching people to do the wrong thing. <laughs> yes. um, well, and, and, and we have, we have as we mentioned, we, had a, had a, we have a long list of these different things you can do uh, uh, that nature does not do, that we see quite often in images. So, so we'll come back to this, um, probably not next week, but we'll, you know, we'll pop them in every now and then. We do. And yeah. uh, I'll just squeeze in, because I think it's so fun, Jim's next question here, or comments, He's still in the, the, the polarizing thing there. You want to use a polarizer uh, for portraits. Oh. Uh, still, I mean, if you have a D1, you say. Yeah, it's good. So, yes, your glasses are polarized. No, but I mean, also, if, if you want to get rid of reflections. If you want to get rid of reflections, yes, but it's, if you have polarizer on the flash, yes, yeah. then you can get rid of the reflections. Yeah. But the fa you, your face will look dead if you remove all <laughs> reflections. I'm born this way, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you look like uh, it's, yeah. it's really awful, but it works. Um, uh, but I w wanted, wanted to say that when you do a portrait and you perhaps are using a softbox or something, you can buy sheets, big sheets of polarizing filters to put in front of your softbox. Um, 
But if you do not use a softbox, you have a D1, you said, Jim, uh, the polarizer filter are a bit too small, but then of course, you, I mean, just cover up the area around the polarizing filter, create some cardboard thing, put the polarizer in there in front of the, uh, the D1, yeah. pol polarize on the lens and boop, off you go. And you will have perfectly polarized light that you can, uh, with your polarizer, remove all reflections and it will look like shit when you do a <laughs> portrait because you need reflections to get the three-dimensional feeling. The eyes will be totally dead and uh, you will look so flat. So it isn't uh, the best way. But it's good when you're shooting with water. It's really good when shooting with water. Uh, or you want to take away the reflections in glasses or with mirrors and or product photography. Yeah, yeah. when, when you're shooting you like, like art. Yeah. You can oh, have yeah. just one A1 straight oh, on, yeah. polarizer, yeah, exactly. polarizer, boom, no reflection. Oh um, yeah, that's when you're shooting like uh, 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 in the gallery, you're, yeah. you're documenting for the museum, exactly. for example. It's a really simple way exactly. to get perfect images. Um, but you, your question still is, can or should or do I use uh, polarizer when I'm doing portraits? No, I don't. I don't. And you can remove some reflections, but only the, th the light that is perfectly polarized. And that is so small amount when you have your flash in this angle. Yeah. So, but I mean, it works a bit. Yeah. It depends on angles and such. So try it out, but uh, don't get, you know, it won't be like magical. <laughs> I'm sorry. Excellent. If, yep. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. And we will see you next week uh, with some more exciting uh, news or uh, topics yeah. and uh, so we'll um, actually no news because light isn't a new thing no it actually it's been around for a while yeah. so. <laughs> 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 but anyway and we'll uh, uh, come back and next week we'll haunt you guys and we will talk more about light thank yeah. you bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.